name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. Now we're hosting Mr. Tim Anderson, a researcher in the field of hegemonic study and director of a center regarding that field in Australia. Uh, Mr. Anderson is with us. Uh, hi, Mr. Anderson. Thank you for accepting our invitation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, as uh, you know, we are going to discuss. We're going to discuss about the uh, situation, ongoing situation inside Iran, and the reaction uh, from the international media towards that. As you know, uh, it, it's more than two months that the uh, Islamic Republic of Iran is facing with a huge propaganda. Um, I mean, from the uh, Western media regarding the ongoing riots inside Iran. What uh, are your analyses regarding that? You, you think how is the connectivity between uh, those propaganda and what's going inside Iran uh, to the uh, strategies uh, of the United States of America regarding the Islamic Republic of Iran? Well, first of all, it's very much like the Syrian copybook in 2011 or we could say the, the Iranian copybook in 2009, the Green Revolution or whatever. But in Syria in 2011, we saw the same things. There were some protests, uh, genuine protests, and then other people that joined in, and then uh, violent groups that joined in and began to kill security forces. And then the Western media began to mash them together and say that the people killed by the violent forces were people killed by the government and so on. So it's very much a, a color revolution scheme that the US has been doing in many countries. Libya, the same sort of thing was carried out. Um, but Syria, it was notable for, because for many, month, many months in Syria in 2011, they kept saying, calling people peaceful protesters when we know there were Takfiri terrorists cutting people's throats and killing literally hundreds of security forces. And that was covered up. Um, for quite a long time. That was quite an achievement, really. I, I mean, a, a remarkable, shocking achievement that the power of this Western media has to distort things. I'll give you one example. For example, they say that Iran has been shelling protesters in Iraq, but there are no protesters in Iraq. Well, of course, for a number of years, this has been going on. There's been a center for terrorist training in Erbil, which has been sending anti-Syrian and anti-Iranian terrorists across the border there. So they are mixing all these things up and creating their own cocktail, which they're now trying to call an Iranian revolution. But they've done it so many times before. That's great. Well, uh, in your point of view, what's going to be uh, what should be the Iran reaction, uh, including Iranian uh, government and also the, uh, I mean, civil activists inside Iran towards such a such a huge propaganda against the Islamic Republic of Iran? As you know, that uh, since the very beginning uh, of this crisis, after the death of uh, Ms. Mahsa Amini, Iranian police has released the uh, CCTV camera footage uh, of her death. Um, she uh, faced with uh, a natural, uh, she was facing with a natural disease and then experienced uh, a heart arrest uh, inside police station. But we have never seen uh, those videos in Western medias. What's going to be, in your point of view, uh, the uh, Iranian uh, reaction towards a propaganda which is ruling by the Western medias? Well, the Iranian reaction is one thing and the international is another. I mean, that video, the closed circuit television of Masa Amini collapsing um, and being taken away to hospital, th those things are available, but they're swamped by all the other things. Also, the coroner's report of her death has been swamped. So in a sense, the evidence of her death and how it happened really has become irrelevant to what's been going on there, really. And in fact, just by coincidence, I had some friends in Iran just before that, and they were told by friends in security there that something was being planned and they were just looking for the right trigger, basically. So clearly, these things are, there's a certain amount of preparation that goes into these things to, for people to have weapons, for these weapons to be pulled out in demonstrations. and. Like I said, it was very similar to the, the Syrian copybook. The difference is that Iran has a fairly strong voice in the world. It can project its voice, albeit being censored and being branded with labels, deterrent labels on US social media and so on. Um, there's the very real security implications of these people from the Mujahideen Kalk, based in Albania now coming across with weapons 
um, the versions of Daesh for coming from Afghanistan side, for example, um, those things obviously are being taken very seriously by Iranian security forces. But in terms of the, the, the public image in the West, I think it's a cycle that's going to be gone through. Um, Iran is a very stable country. It has much higher levels of trust in its government than does the USA, for example, which is an interesting fact we should, I, I should bring to a, the attention of Western audiences here. But the reaction inside Iran, I think that's for, for Iranian people to speak about. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, as you know, that's um, a couple of days ago, President Macron in France has met with uh, part of the Iranian opposition uh, in Paris. Uh, he, I mean, has hosted them in Paris. Many uh, medias are concentrating on these events and uh, calling that extraordinary. Uh, but uh, we know that um, France has a background of hosting uh, terrorist militants, as you mentioned, Mujahideen Khalq, uh, inside uh, French uh, territory. Uh, how do you see that? What is your analyze regarding the meeting between uh, Macron and the Iranian opposition in Paris? Well, you know, the European role or the European in NATO role particularly has been a, a fairly stable one for some time. They act as Washington allocate, allocates to them. They delegate certain functions to them. They delegate functions to France to do with um, Lebanon, for example. They delegate to Britain to deal with Palestine, for example. So they are acting really under the, the tutelage of the US. And um, uh, you're right that the, the President Macron has hosted uh, opposition figures, exile opposition figures um, uh, uh, from Iran, also from Venezuela, from other countries. The US has a store of these personalities who are, you know, in the case of the unelected Juan Guaido, uh, a strange character wandering around the world, but was a pretext for the US and for Britain to steal the external assets of Venezuela. And now that's a very real crime. They use these almost comical, sometimes puppet-like characters, but they use it to carry out real crimes. So it's something that has to be taken very seriously. But as I say, France is really just playing a role uh, that's delegated to it by Washington. And we see some of the tensions, by the way, coming up between Washington and its European junior partners in, in relation to the war in Ukraine. Of course, the Europeans are going to suffer a lot more from that one than the US itself. Thank you. Well, uh, part of that propaganda, which I have mentioned uh, from the beginning of our discussion, uh, is concentrated on a so-called campaign uh, regarding claiming that the Islamic Republic of Iran has sold drone, suicide drone, Shahed, uh, which are, um, according to the Western uh, centers, uh, I mean, uh, concentrating on the military studies are so precise. They are they they are claiming that the Islamic Republic of Iran uh, is selling those, uh, I mean, drones to the Russian government uh, to use them against uh, Ukrainian forces. But officially, the, the Iranian foreign ministry has denied that, but saying that, that they have sold a uh, number of drones uh, to the uh, Russian uh, forces uh, months uh, before the beginning of war in Ukraine. But um, given the fact that the Islamic Republic of Iran has made it quite clear, they are trying to um, put Islamic Republic of Iran uh, somewhere inside the Ukraine, Ukrainian crisis. What is your analysis regarding that? What are they plan? What's going to be their next steps uh, from the uh, from calling Iran as a country uh, which is supporting one part in the Ukrainian war, given the fact that we know that the United States of America and other countries, um, which they have clearly said that are selling different types of weapon to the another side of the war, which is Ukraine. Yes, in one respect, I believe it's to do with the attempt to enforce the so-called sanctions, really unilateral coercive measures in the case of Iran um, and Russia for that matter. Um, enforce those measures because if they can brand a country as breaching some sort of international law, then 
they can try and enforce the banking system to exclude them. And they've done it with little countries like Cuba, for example, to claiming that Cuba is a sponsor of terrorism and therefore reinforcing their financial blockade through the SWIFT and dollar system and so on. So it serves some purpose for them in trying to pursue their economic war against Iran. But I don't think it really, uh, I don't think it's really taken very seriously because after all, there has, there has been evidence of these drones and uh, okay, there are Iranian designs for drones. It's pretty clear that the Russians can copy them if they want to. I've seen some of them, some of the copies, and they've used US components too. So they've got North American components in them too. But I think they, they hype it up really to try and uh, link it to their economic warfare, the, the attempt to isolate countries. But unfortunately for them, it's gone a bit too far. And so you have now um, half the world effectively joining together in groups like the Shanghai Cooperation Organization and the BRICS and so on, because so many countries have been uh, lumped into this basket of trying to be uh, of blockades, financial, economic blockades, trying to turn off all the taps for their um, for their livelihoods, and in some cases importing medicines and food and so on. I know Iran is quite self-sufficient in a lot of things, but Iran is now, for this reason, for this very reason, uh, developing its strategic relationships with China and with Russia and with Venezuela, with a, with a number of countries. Thank you very much, Tim Anderson, for accepting our invitation and participating in our discussion. Very welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Tim Anderson. It was a great discussion. Thank you so much. Thank you for yeah, accepting sure. our invitation. Well. And I'm again and again, I'm so sorry for delays which we have experienced due this to the internet. I understand situation. these things happen. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good Bye. luck. Bye.